Hey friends, breaking news, the census has just released updated data and migration patterns are super high for the South, driving more people to these areas, particularly in the Florida marketplace than most any other markets throughout the country. And it's logical to tie that information in with the fact that Florida has had ongoing reports that it's seemingly impervious, completely resilient to this ongoing housing correction that started last summer and has actually rippled throughout the country, particularly in the West. Now, I gotta tell you, I've been watching the market close and I'm gonna update you on one of my most popular videos which highlights five to six metro areas in the Florida marketplace that I think are on a course for five to 10% price loss by as early as December of 2023. You need to know what is going on in these particular areas because it could affect your home's value in time. But more importantly, if you're looking to buy in the central Florida market, you obviously want to know where is your best opportunity to find a deal and what's going on in the overall climate here in the South. Well, today I'm going to give you a very detailed update on those marketplaces, but I'm also going to shed some light on recent data that has affected Florida from the jobs reports, new migration data, and again, these particular marketplaces that are absolutely showing the earliest signs of cracking. I've got a great update ahead for you, but do me a quick favor, smash that like button and let's get started. All right, folks, let's start off by talking about the migration trends. This is the most updated metro information from the U.S. Census Bureau. This is about a week or two old. And as you can see, against the naysayers who really said, hey, you know what, that south migration growth that's been taking place, that was a pandemic push and that's over. Kiss it goodbye. It's going to change. 2022 is going to be the end. And again, as you can imagine, this is at the detriment to the Northeast, particularly and to the Midwest. The West plummeted against its 30 year backdrop here, as you can see, looks like it bounced back a little bit in the right direction in the last year of data that we have. But again, the South folks is on a tear. Here's the thing, folks. The South has been hot because migration has been hot. The South has had people selling in the West, selling expensive homes, moving here with plenty of money in their pocket, ready to drive our home prices up. Can that continue? Can this number, can migration stay at our backs? Because I got some other data that's kind of troubling to look at. I'm going to show it to you right now. Folks, look at this. This is from last Friday's jobs report from ADP, the information they put out on where jobs are going. Look at the South, folks. Net loss, 103,000 jobs. Look at the gainers. Mid-Atlantic, 238,000 plus. Look at this, 69,000 New England. The, the East North plus 127. Folks, look at the Pacific, Washington down to California. I do not understand this, especially in light of all of the job losses that have been taking place in the tech sector, yet the Pacific is reporting a big 270,000 jobs push. Uh, and again, Texas combined with Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana. Louisiana's demographics are very negative, could be part of that, but 161,000 in the west south one of the things i do want to bring up that makes me feel less concerned for now about this report i'm concerned in the long run about this report i'm not concerned for now about this report here's why in florida we have taken on so many people from the new england area from the mid-atlantic east north from the west into our market okay you just saw the migration data i want to jump to this report next because it's super important to understand the people that i talk to on a week in week out basis have jobs, their employers are in these other marketplaces. They're in New England, they're in Mid-Atlantic, but they live here. It's not a great thing. Again, you lose 100,000 net jobs across all these states. You know, we never know, you know, this is a group report, regional report. Uh, so we never know if, you know, maybe Florida's on the positive side of that. I, I haven't taken a further look, but I just wanna show you where the regions are being impacted most. But keep in mind, in Florida, we are the recipient of people who work in a lot of other markets. I do predict and believe that you are going to see level two, level three push, you know, to get people back to jobs local to their marketplaces. So I think that you've already seen in the pandemic, everyone's like, yeah, go live wherever you want. Then it became, hey, why don't you come back to work once in a while? Then it became, hey, why don't you come back to work half the week? And now you're starting to read stories in the market in the marketplace now where people are like saying, hey, I'm quitting my job because they want me to come back to work. I think you're going to see more of a push for that because this is not good for people to be having higher paying New England wages. They live in the South. They're not spending their New England dollars in the New England area. And I think that's going to be super unpopular for the municipal side of things. I think you're also seeing the problems that are coming from commercial where people are saying like, 
communities in different marketplaces, particularly you're seeing this in the West where there's just commercial is starting to hit a wall because people are not coming to the office, the office space isn't needed. So a lot of this pressure is gonna put people, you know, and particularly from the municipal side, of, hey, look, we're having trouble in our economy. This is where the wages come from. If that really takes effect, that is gonna spell really bad news for the South. So we'll have to see how all that shakes out. All right, folks, you have the state right in front of you. This is a map of population growth, year over year population growth. The heat map shows the volume of move into the area. Moving out of the area, you see it blue and cold, okay? So we'll look across the state real quick. You can see that the major, major areas of Florida, you have Jacksonville up here, red hot, Tampa here, red hot, Orange County, which is the Orlando seat, red hot, and then Miami, Fort Lauderdale, obviously the tail end of Florida, Cape Coral even, Lee County, red hot with population growth. Now, what I wanna call your attention to is these orange areas that also seeing massive population bloom. You know, and again, some areas I wanna point out as we go, because I kinda of wanna lead this in, kind of going from migration into what is going on in the state of Florida, what areas are in trouble and why, okay? But let me tell you about some marketplaces. I'm gonna breeze through some that you won't hear about and why you won't hear about them, because and invariably people are gonna come in the comments and say, what about Tallahassee? It's crazy here. I can't get a house under contract. Did you mention that? Look at this. Pensacola, still massive migration in, doing really well, generally speaking. Not anything to write home about in terms of that market being tipped over. Tallahassee, same thing. If you're in Tallahassee trying to buy a house, forget about it. Inventory is still ridiculously low. Nothing's happening there that's negative. Could be because the Seminoles are, you know, it's the home of the Seminoles. Who doesn't want to live in Tallahassee? Now let's talk about the Gators in Gainesville. Gainesville is on the similar path. It's doing great on its own medium small to medium sized economy, but it's not doing that bad, okay? We're gonna point out some marketplaces south of Gainesville that absolutely are shifting and looking kind of bad for itself right now. One of the things you're not gonna hear me talk about today on this particular update is the main markets. I'm gonna update those on a later date. And honestly, there's not too much negative to say about Jacksonville, Orlando, Miami. Tampa's seeing a little bit of a shift, but even then, holding its own until you get towards the coast and the Gulf side, and you're gonna see a lot of, of slowdown there. Some of the things we will talk about today, you have Northport, Florida, Punta Gorda. Uh, you got a lot of these markets that are the sub-markets outside of Orlando, where people wanted to buy in the in-betweens, okay? These are the areas that absolutely have the signs of potential cracking, because when people couldn't afford Orlando, they couldn't afford Tampa, they went to the next town over. So you have Polk County, for instance, which is the Lakeland area, this particular area like had a population balloon, as you can see on the screen, it's red. And this really was kind of like a middle spot, kind of quasi rural in a lot of areas that's absolutely built up, blown up. And it's one to watch because those marketplaces, they weren't the number one spot for people to want to live when they were coming to Orlando Tampa back before pandemic. They were kind of like, well, that's kind of far. That's 45 minutes from town. I'm not going to go there. But now people are like, I can't afford Tampa, so expensive, and the rents are even high. I'm gonna buy in the middle area, and you know I've gotta commute two or three days of work. It's gonna be 50 minutes one way, or 45 minutes one way. They still bought it. They still bought it, and those areas are starting to translate to shifting. We're gonna start to see exactly what's going on there. But let me show you some specific marketplaces that didn't make the list but are of interest. Again, this isn't gonna come up today, but let me show you some things here in Volusia County, because I know you're gonna ask, Ormond Beach is gonna be one to watch. 318% year over year volume growth. And then even coming down here, folks wanna know about what's going on in Volusia. Folks, I really am not putting a lot of Volusia on the list. Um, you've got this area down here, which is I think DeBerry for the most part, 32713. East DeLand, also 178%. Again, on the surface, those sound like high numbers. Again, 252% inventory growth is big. You know, that's not anything to sneeze at in terms of the numbers. But this is, there's so many more houses here versus the 88 that are on the market. It's just not worth talking about, okay? These are, you know, the, the numbers when you see in uh, the Volusia County marketplace, folks in Volusia, the percentage of houses that are for sale versus how many houses are actually there is such a low number that I think there's still plenty of room to grow. I'm not even putting it on a watch list yet. So those of you that always ask about Volusia because it is an active marketplace just north of Orlando and we are marked, honestly, a lot of the market data we have 
kind of cruises from the Ocala area just northwest of Orlando, creeps down to below Tampa, and we kind of curl back towards the Gulf, okay? Some other markets that I say we should watch, cautiously watch, there's some big inventory jumps in the Port St. Lucie area, okay? So you got 4894, 297.8% inventory growth, 268% in the north part of uh, Port St. Lucie. The zip codes along A1A, 215%, 261%, 266%. You know, much like the Volusia County area that I just mentioned, Port St. Lucie, these are not high percentages of volume for these areas, okay? Which I take to mean, I think that a lot of inventory was so low that even now it's not a really big number to be able to pull it on the list. However, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it. In Port St. Lucie, Ormond Beach area. These are the ones I think could shift on the East Coast possibly first, because if you look down the East Coast, there's just not a lot of weak spots yet. It's crazy to me, but folks, the Gulf is the opposite. The Gulf on the water is incredibly fragile. It is incredible to me how high it's gone. We're now like Indian Rock Beach. We're now looking Madeira Beach, Treasure Island. You have 266% inventory growth, 368% Indian uh, Rock Beach. I want to be honest and candid with you folks that um, when we're looking at some of these Gulf areas that they tend to have high percentages of properties there on the market at any given time. So, you know, you see these inventory flexes where they're like, boom, you know, these beach areas have some inventory on the market. That's not completely a one-time thing that's happened before okay there's been seasons in the past where these inventory markers get really really high but let me start here folks the marketplaces to watch that i think have a very good chance of losing five to ten percent this year this is what you tuned in for this is where i want to start right now the first marketplace that we're going to look at is the ocala marketplace okay ocala balloon okay it's an hour and 17 minutes northwest of orlando it's a straight shot up the turnpike it's a medium-sized marketplace if i can call it that you may come in the comments and say jared i have a better descriptor for ocala please share it and don't be mad i call it medium size but they don't have an international airport the people here commute to orlando for that this is a high equestrian community there's a lot of warehouse and industrial Different companies like that are based along the uh, corridor here of the Turnpike. And again, it's growing. It's growing because it's super affordable. So people from Gainesville might come down to Ocala. People from Orlando are looking and making an option to live in Ocala. People that are you know, finding Ocala on the internet when they're relocating here, like, wow, I cannot believe this $275,000 house exists. And as a result, Ocala is starting to see a blow up. Okay, you have a lot of builders active here, but let's take a look at the marketplace. The east side of the marketplace in Ocala has not seen a massive inventory shift yet. You got some 70% numbers, 75% numbers, 112%. But when you look across the west side of the city, big, big numbers, big numbers, folks. 271% in 482, 481's got 386%. Again, 314.8%. These are big numbers. These are good size numbers against the backdrop of how many homes there are. There's just a lot of inventory that is for sale versus even how many homes are in the area. Also, folks, you have a lot of building supply going on here. Builders are dumping money in this marketplace, which means all the resale homeowners are now competing with new home sales to get out. And that's not good in the face of anemic demand. Interest rates go up again towards 7%. Ocala is going to have a very tough summer. Now look at the corresponding percentage of homes and price cuts. Now folks, most marketplaces, when you start going over 20% of all homes needing a price reduction, you start to really see symptoms of sellers that are freaking out and reducing prices, okay? You'll see that those are historical highs. A lot of marketplaces never, six, seven years back of realtor.com data, never see 25% price reductions in their entire marketplace. But take a look at this, folks nearly one in three. So you have 28% here on the west side of town, 46.8%, some of the biggest volume that you'll ever see in terms of percentage of price reductions. Again, south and west. You're in Ocala, you're looking for areas where the sellers are getting a little tense. These are the ones. On the east, you got 617, 
33.3% of all homes there price reduced, um, but you got some big, big numbers in the West and in the Southwest in Ocala. All right, folks, pulling back here, you can see Orlando. We just finished with Ocala. We're Northwest. We're gonna go just South of that and take a look at our friends in the villages. And again, the villages was a popular update I did last time on this particular group of potential fire sale properties, large price reductions coming and this and that. Now, one of the things I wanna showcase for you folks Inventory in the villages came down a little bit, but it's still incredibly high for this area at 237%, folks. That is crazy. And again, the villages is, is the most popular active adult community, 55 plus community, probably on the planet. The entire city is built around that as a destination for an activity center and just a high dense network full of neighborhoods available to cater to the 55 plus crowd. Now take a look at this, folks. This is a little down from the, the last update, which I don't remember what it was, but I know it wasn't 237%. But get this, folks, the price reduction volume. Okay, before I flip this on, I got to tell you, last time I did the update, I was sharing with everybody that like, this is a crazy amount of inventory that hit the market. It's gone way up in the villages, yet price reductions were low. They, were, they didn't match. They were like 20% or something like that. And I said, there is no way this can continue because what's gonna happen, inventory is still coming, buyers are standing back and not buying the inventory. What happened? Predicted it. I said, you know what? There's gonna be a stalemate, someone's gonna blink, and it was the sellers, folks. One out of two listings in the villages seeing a price reduction in order to sell. Now, folks, there's an interesting phenomenon about the villages. When you have active adult community, you gotta understand, I looked it up recently in the last week, Full 50%, half of all homes in the villages are vacant, okay? And I don't wanna to be too morbid, but the reality is a lot of times that people pass away, they, the, the heirs of the people that own these homes in the villages end up having estate sales, okay? So it's, just a, it's a process, it's a part of the, the factor of this particular community. There's a lot of homes that for whatever reason, either they're estate sale driven or it's just a matter of people don't want to sell their home while they live in it, you know, that have homes in the villages, a huge percentage of them are vacant. Vacant homes are the most motivated sellers, folks, because either the heir might be paying for the mortgage, there is a good percentage of homes in the villages that do have mortgages on them, they're all paid off in cash, and the heirs have to pay those bills until those homes sell. So it does drive motivation. In the end, a lot of these homes are going to sell because the prices are gonna get brought where they need to be. It'll be interesting to see what happens in this marketplace. So take a look at this, folks. Median sale price fell below prior year. So right now in the villages, it is down negative 2%. It's a very, very choppy graph, but you can kind of see coming into the new year, it held 6% over the prior year and it just tanked under the line. And it makes these like gasps of air and it just keeps kind of coming back down. We're gonna see how this shakes out. I definitely, definitely think you're gonna see some price correction coming in the villages. It was off the charts. I mean, it was incredible. Look, look at the size of the gap between one year to the next. Here you have April of 2022, 367,000. It was a 30% price growth in a single year. And a lot of that held. I mean, it's a huge gap, folks. I mean, you're talking enormous amount of appreciation overnight. What goes up must come down, folks. All right, folks, marketplace number three that I want to provide an update for is the Lakeland metro area. Now, this particular marketplace, largely Polk County, is just south below the Orlando marketplace, south, southwest. You now have a, a good bit of this market shifted where you had incredibly high percentages of year-over-year -year inventory. This market took a, took a little bit of a you know, a little bit of a reprieve. However, you still have a lot of really high inventory counts here. 801s, 202%, 230% to the north, 247% near the airport. 812 is 313%. Folks, look at this. Going towards Davenport, you have two marketplaces to keep your eye on. These marketplaces right here are the top edge of the uh, Lakeland Metro, but they're actually more you know, you see Disney World right here, they're closer to the Orlando Metro. The interesting thing, these marketplaces are highly, highly uh, second home vacation home ownership. As you can see, they are off the charts high. So they have jumped, this one jumped 444%. 
and this piece of Davenport jumped, uh, this is 33837, jumped 274%. Again, these are gonna be ones to watch. Again, this one's over 300% here, uh, 34759. And again, ones to watch. These are incredibly high throughout the Lakeland metro area. So if you look at Lakeland again, you can see that price cuts one in five on the east, 815 is only seeing a 15% price cut. Again, you, you know, a lot of times these sellers that have big inventory show up the market, they're slow to respond and then they eventually do. Again, near the airport, 34.6%. So again, Davenport at 25.9% price reduction. Again, if interest rates climb at all, I have a feeling you're gonna see these particular markets shift in a big way, a lot higher uh, price reduction volume. There's also a lot of new construction involvement in this particular area. Lake Alfred, uh, Winter Haven, and uh, again, Davenport, Lakeland as well. A lot of builders just pushed in to meet the growing demand of the population in this particular area. This is showing change by zip code for home value. As you can see, the, the darker red areas are the ones where home value is shifting the most. And again, these two Davenport locations, as you can see, are shifting. Uh, you can see the downtown area for Lakeland holding pretty strong. That's obviously why people there are not reducing their price. These are obviously, they're also low, low price points, $200,000 average, $179,000 to the, uh, but you are starting to see some changes in the South where there's a lot of market activity, you know, from inventory climbing and so forth. Interesting, Winter Haven is still on fire. Ice cold in all the data points that we saw Winter Haven is still growing. The, the market there is hot, inventory is staying down, and price reductions are staying low in the Lakeland area. Now, the last two marketplaces I'm gonna cover for you are the Bradenton, Sarasota area, and then we're gonna hold into Punta Gorda and check that marketplace out. These are the last two areas that I think you're gonna see significant changes over the next year to two years. All right, first off in Bradenton, folks, we got some big zip code growth. In the north, you've got 267.8% in 34221. Over here, the west, 34209, 384%. All the coastal areas are absolutely skyrocketing in both inventory and price reductions. Longboat Key, 353%, folks. Anna Marie Island up here pushing 200% in inventory growth. 195% just below that at 34217. And again, a bunch of different markets. You got one down here in the south, 34235 which is seeing 440%. Now looking at price reductions in Bradenton, down the heart of town, 34205, 43%, folks. 34203, 37%. The coastal areas all pushing one out of three of these properties hitting price reductions. Folks, you're gonna see these push higher. You're gonna see these coastal areas higher and higher. I mean, those markets have gone so high. I think I saw a graph that one in 10 of the houses up here on Anna Marie Island is on the market for sale in 34216, which again, it's a small little tip of an island, but it absolutely blew up in price and popularity. Again, balloon economics, folks. Dropping into Sarasota as well, again, down the heart, doing really well, very low price reductions here, even on the coast, which again, Gulf side is unusual to see. If you are in Sarasota Beach, or you're on Siesta Key, these marketplaces are tight as can be. You're in good shape there, and you're fortunate because that is not the typical Gulf side view for the water side. Now downtown, not much happening here in terms of price reductions. So you get the 34239, jumps up to 22.8%. Further down in 231, goes to 30%, and then over towards the east, 32.5% in terms of price reduction volume. Now, folks, we're still on the Gulf side. We're just below Sarasota. I want to show North Point, Florida to you. If you're a local on the Gulf side, you've heard a lot about North Port because it's become super popular lately. It's one of the top growing cities, percentage of population growth in the entire U.S. Ranks in the top five in some of the lists I've seen. This area has ballooned in population and popularity, but look at the numbers now in this marketplace. 34287, folks. 494%, and 34292, 417%, 291, 296%. All across this marketplace, you have big, big inventory growth. Now folks, a couple of the zip codes at Northport have caught on. One out of three has a price reduction in 287. Almost four in 10 has a price reduction in 292. 
you've got the north kind of going into the east side of this marketplace is going to catch on. It's just a little bit of a lag effect. The sellers then go, oh no, we've got to adjust prices. And Inglewood to the south, by the way, 34.3% of all homes there going through price reductions. Let me tell you about something that's concerning for Punta Gorda, folks. The amount of multifamily being built in that marketplace in the next two years. There is a huge supply of permitted and under construction inventory for apartments, multifamily, opportunities for people to live in that are coming due in the next two years, way more than household formation and all of that will support, okay? You are going to see an incredible amount of pressure in Punta Gorda, I believe, over the next 12 to 24 months. But let's take a look at how it's sitting right now. Punta Gorda has a year-over-year -year supply pushing nearly 200%. That's a good number on its own. Running across Port Charlotte for all of you guys, 281%. To the east, this number has remained high. We've watched this one a couple times. 140% down the heart of Port Charlotte, and then out here on the outside, Rotonda West, 350% down here. Huge, huge numbers. Now, price cuts, folks. Punta Gorda, you're seeing a 35.2% price reduction volume in 33950. Now, the heart of Port Charlotte, 37.2%. Punta Gorda is chasing some big numbers against last year, and I think you're gonna see this market start to really, really shift towards the end of this year. Hey folks, that's it for the five top floors on the watch list for correction in the ironclad real estate marketplace, which is the state of Florida. We're gonna watch into the months ahead. I promise to keep you updated on all the changes that take place in our great state. And as always, if you've watched to this point in the video, please do me a favor, smash the like button for me really fast greatly appreciate it. And please leave a comment. Go down in the comments below. Tell me how you're doing. Tell me how your market looks. Tell me the video is great. Tell me you hated it. Whatever it is, it'd mean a lot if you go down there and say something for me. But thanks again for watching. We'll see you in the next one.